In an effort to keep an eye on drug dealers, the police opened a fried chicken shop on the next street. Unexpectedly, the chicken shop was bustling with customers every day and the business was thriving, as branches seemed poised to spread across the nation. Not a single drug dealer had been caught. Captain Gao and his narcotics team were considered the underachievers within the police department. The reason is simple, inexperience. Even drug dealers that bystanders could easily toss aside. They ended up chasing them for eight blocks. Just as they were about to catch them, the suspect countered with a stun gun. Fortunately, thanks to a bus, the drug dealer did not escape the arm of the law. But back at the station, the police superintendent was furious. Capturing a minor drug dealer took a year. And now they have to deal with a 16-vehicle pileup accident. Just yesterday, the major crime unit easily found several kilograms of methamphetamine, making the narcotics team's efforts seem redundant. If you can't produce results, we might as well disband here and now, he threatened. Captain Ko. Hearing this, knew he couldn't let that happen, with no other choice, he set his sights on the largest drug trafficking organization in Korea. After a week of surveillance, Captain Gao finally located the drug dealer's hideout. They kept watch from a fried chicken shop across the street for a week before they finally saw the face of the drug lord. The next step was to gather evidence. Hearing that the people across the street frequently ordered takeout, Captain Gao was considering whether he could disguise himself as a delivery person to infiltrate the place and install wiretaps and cameras. They inquired with the fried chicken shop owner if he needed delivery personnel, to which the owner replied, We don't need delivery people. Do you lack a fried chicken shop? <laughs> Have you not noticed that your team has been the only table of customers for a week? It turned out the shop was failing, and the chicken restaurant owner had been wanting to cash out for a while. Today was to be the last day of business. Captain Ko, determined to see things through, cashed out all his retirement savings to take over the fried chicken shop. The surveillance operation was proceeding smoothly, but then something unexpected happened. The neighbors, hearing about the new shop, flocked to try it out. But Captain Ko wasn't there to run a real business. He had to turn the customers away, claiming they were out of supplies. As time passed, Captain Gao felt that continuing in this way was not a solution. A fried chicken shop without fried chicken is as absurd as a husband without a wife. What if the drug lord caught onto their ruse? While the team was adept at catching criminals, none had experience in cooking chicken. Fortunately, Detective Ma from their team was a food enthusiast. Even if he hadn't cooked pork, he'd seen pigs run after Chief Detective Ma adjusted the seasonings. The fragrant fried chicken emerged. Oh, Soon enough, hordes of foodies came seeking the famed chicken. They counted money until their hands cramped, almost forgetting their true mission. Only Young Ho, on stakeout duty at the door, remembered his primary job. One day, the big drug lord appeared again. Everyone was busy frying chicken and had no time to answer his call. <laughs> Captain Gao, full of regret and after careful consideration, decided to double the prices to scare off the customer. But unexpectedly, business boomed even more after the price hike. Due to its costliness, it was dubbed Emperor's Fried Chicken and became a must-visit spot for food vloggers and tourists. Due to the team's continued negligence of duty, the inspector could no longer turn a blind eye. Since the business is doing so well, consider your badges gone, how it must be affecting your chicken business. It turns out that the recent call for a food order had been made by the drug dealers. This was the moment Captain Ko and his team had been waiting for. They immediately geared up, ready to face off with the drug trafficking organization. But upon arrival, Captain Ko was stunned. Where was the drug trafficking organization? It was just the neighboring ante. It turned out that because the chicken shop was too popular, the drug dealers felt unsafe with the daily crowd and had fled overnight. Captain Ko and his team, busy with frying chicken, were clueless about the escape. The operation was a complete failure, and they were suspended. Captain Gao thought that even if he lost his job, making money by selling chicken wasn't too bad of an alternative. But unexpectedly, the next day, News reports slandered the chicken shop. Previously, when the business was booming, a TV station had approached them for advertising. How could a group of narcotics officers appear on TV? Captain Ko had unceremoniously sent them packing, 
Little did he know, the retaliation would come so swiftly, the shop was now completely unable to continue operating. Captain Ko cried like a 200-pound child in his wife's arms. His wife, aware of Captain Ko's hardships, comforted him in return. Even if we can no longer be police officers, don't we still have our pensions? Running a small shop wouldn't be too bad, but the pension had already been used to buy the fried chicken shop which made Captain Gao cry even louder. Fortunately, as the saying goes, every cloud has a silver lining. Captain Ko's fried chicken shop caught the eye of a boss, who was quite generous and offered a suitcase full of cash up front. The boss wanted to turn it into a national chain and then take it international. The owner hadn't deceived them the fried chicken shop not only reopened but also became a nationwide sensation overnight. Captain Gao thought of his daughter and finally made up his mind to run the fried chicken shop well and no longer deal with narcotics police work. But as the adage goes, there is something peculiar when things are too abnormal. Why would a boss take an interest in Captain K.O.'s rundown shop out of the blue? The good times didn't last long as the franchises started to get bad press frequently. Complaints of rude staff, smoking in the kitchen, and near-death experiences with the food were rampant. It was a relentless stream of negative reviews. Captain Ko and his team couldn't bear to watch and went to investigate the franchises. These employees didn't look like they were interested in running the business properly. This was no way to do business. Upon closer inspection, they found something fishy. The staff of the franchise store were either ex-convicts or individuals awaiting sentencing. Not a single one was an ordinary person. Moreover, the takeout they delivered was never actually eaten. Customers would immediately throw away the fried chicken upon receiving it, which was highly unusual. Captain Ko discovered that the staff were hiding drugs in the fried chicken, and all those who ordered the deliveries were addicts. It turned out that the investor of their fried chicken shop was not some big-time boss at all. He was an underling of a drug lord. He had no intention of properly running a business. It was just a way to distribute drugs through the channels of the fried chicken shop. Daring to traffic drugs right under the noses of narcotics officers, Captain Ko rallied his team to take action but couldn't get in touch with Detective Ma. Detective Ma, ever the dedicated officer, had already gone to the franchise the previous night to investigate undercover. He even casually joined the drug dealers in a game of mahjong. While playing, the dealers chatted in Chinese. <laughs> Not realizing that Detective Ma, coming from an overseas Chinese background, understood every word, leading to a very awkward situation. Outnumbered, Detective Ma was eventually knocked out and taken away. The scene returns to Captain Ko, who was unable to make contact with Officer Ma. The drug dealers made a video call, hoping to lure them into a trap and capture them all at once. Detective Jang, upon seeing the situation, immediately activated the couple's location feature and urged Captain Ko to rescue Detective Ma. He wasn't just worried about Detective Jang's safety. He was also concerned that Detective Ma might go too far and accidentally kill someone in the confrontation. These cops might not be the best at investigating, but they were all first-rate fighters. <laughs> Detective Ma was a former member of the National Judo Team. Young Ho was from the Marine Corps Special Forces. Detective Jang was a Muay Thai champion. And Jae Hoon was tough from his time on a baseball team. As for Captain Gao, he was not only in charge of managing this group of people, but he had also survived being stabbed 12 times by a criminal and managed to subdue him before being taken to the hospital, earning him the nickname The Undying Zombie. Together, these five could take down a drug syndicate in minutes, while they were busy tying up the criminals. One thug tried to sneak up for a surprise attack. Bonjour. Bienvenue. The drug lord tried to escape by boat, but Captain Gao caught up with him and held on tightly, not letting go. By the time backup arrived, all the drug dealers had been subdued. In the end, Captain Gao and his team not only returned safely to the police station, but they also received promotions for their successful operation. And so the movie ended. And it seems like it's time for you to order some fried chicken. Enjoy your meal!